grace. Grace in the Bible is power. It's enabling power. It's God's life. And more specifically, it's the labor of God on man's behalf. What are we saved by? We're saved by His work. However, His work isn't just 2,000 years ago. Catch this, it's one of the most important things you'll ever grasp. His work is grace, and it works today. How are you saved by grace? Not just 2,000 years ago. How are you saved from your temptation to lust right now? By grace. Where do you access that grace? In Christ. You see, grace is there for the having, but you need to be in Christ to access the throne room of grace. The throne of grace is the very presence of God. You have no business in the presence of God. You have to be perfectly righteous. Didn't ever, anyone ever tell you you'd have to be perfect? You'd have to bear the nature of that very presence, which by the way is holy, 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 which means other than this world, other than this world, and other than this world. The trifold holiness and otherness of God. The throne room of grace is where the grace is, but you've been cut off from it because of your sin. But because of the cross, you've been clothed in Christ. And because you're in Christ, you've been brought near by that blood. You've been brought to the throne room of grace. Come boldly, he says, under the throne of grace, where you may acquire that grace for help in time of need. And we have time of need. So the labor of God on man's behalf. But by the grace of God, says Paul, I am what I am. So why is he what he is? By the grace of God. Most of us think that the grace of God is a hug. God looks at us and we're these woeful creatures. And he says, oh, you poor thing. And he hugs us. And that's grace. No, that's mercy and kindness. There's words for it. It's not grace. Grace is us being stuck in a mud pit with the pigs and God leaning down, picking us up, cleaning us off, setting our feet upon a rock and then sticking his power inside us and saying, live. You see, he is working. He worked and he's working. And that's grace. So, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But think about this. His grace was bestowed on Paul. And what does he say? With that grace, he labored more abundantly than they all. Well, I thought grace was a hug. No, grace enabled Paul to labor more abundantly. Yet not I, it wasn't me laboring, Paul says, but the grace of God, which was with me, was laboring. It's the labor of God on man's behalf. It's the Spirit of God. It's the life of Jesus imparted. You see, you're picked up out of the mud, you're cleaned off, and your feet are stuck upon a rock. And then God says, go live. I'd like to come in and take over your body, and I'd like to live my life in and through it. First of all, you accept it as impossible. You don't try and diminish and say, well, you don't actually have to do that. No, you say, I need to do that, but I can't. And so you get in Christ. And now you have access into the throne room of grace. And so what does Jesus say? Ask the Father in my name. I've brought you near. I've done everything. You're in me, you're in a position of authority. You have a position to ask. He will treat you and he will treat your request the way he would treat mine. Ask in my name. Father, could I have the Holy Spirit to live this life? Could I have your life in me? Could I live by grace? I would love to give you my grace. That's why I sent you my son, so that you could come and ask that question and I could answer yes. He delights to give us what we need. What's coming inside? It's called grace. How do you live? By that grace. What saved you? Grace. God laboring to pick you up out of that mud. But then what enables you to live? God living inside of you. It's called the manifold wonder of grace. But it's grace that saves you. Grace is not just evidence at the cross, but has been made eternally available through the cross. This grace is ever-present, always available, always accessible, amazingly sufficient for every good work, potently efficacious, and divinely effective in procuring its ends. Grace works. Now unto him that is able. What a statement! It's not talking about unto you who are able, it's unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. How? According to the power that worketh in us. Has anyone told you about the sacred entrustment of grace? Has anyone informed you of this? That you have been given a power and a might to live an impossible life? Has anyone communicated with you? This is called the gospel. 
gospel of grace. We have so diminished the gospel of grace that this comes as a shocker to us. According to the power that worketh in us. You have a power working in you? Do you have the strength and the might of an army, the army of heaven, working in you, taking these hands and causing them to heed and to do the work of God Almighty on this earth? To take these eyes and look away from that which would sin and blandish the soul and look straight at what God is looking at? To cause this heart to not be moved by human emotion, but to actually be caught up with the burden of God? To take these feet and no longer walk in the path of darkness in the broad way, but walk the narrow way? Do you have the strength of God in you? carrying you in the direction of God Almighty. God Almighty. God Almighty. Has anyone told you about the sacred entrustment? That if you believe in Christ, you have access into the throne of grace. And if you come under the throne of grace, in Christ Jesus, you can make petition of the Father who will give you the strength of God, known as the Holy Spirit, the very person of God to dwell in you. The very Christ that clothes you is also the very Christ that enables you within to live the same life he lived while here on earth.